When the going gets tough, people in Italy's so-called red zones keep calm and carry on. With face masks, of course. The tasks of daily life, like in making pizza at home with the children, take on renewed meaning. We're rediscovering things that in the daily grind went on the back burner, Maria Cristina Baggi tells me via the internet. Her nine-year-old daughter, Cecilia, continues her classes online. We're living in serenity in our family, Maria Cristina says. We're enjoying our children, who we almost never saw because of work. It's not easy, however, when one's life is turned upside down by an invisible threat. Buongiorno. Good day, even if it's not a good day, says Monica Moretti, who has been posting her drives around the largely deserted streets of her town of Casal Pusterlengo. The supermarket is running low on cheese. Prosciutto supplies appear to be okay. The start of the coronavirus crisis was unnerving, she recalls. At the beginning, it was like being in a disaster movie of germ warfare in which people are dying, she tells me. After more than a week, however, she and her daughter have settled down to a routine. When the weather is nice, she says, we go out to walk for a few hours, but mostly we cook and eat. It's odd. We continue to eat because when you have nothing to do, it's probably a mechanism that clicks in your head telling you you're in trouble and need to eat. Such stoicism aside, Italy is in trouble. At a press conference in Milan, it was hard for the assembled officials and medical experts to downplay the gravity of the situation. They announced the red zones will stay on lockdown for at least another week. Dr. Massimo Galli is head of the unit for infectious diseases in the Milan hospital where many coronavirus patients are being treated. I am afraid that uh, I, we will uh, to expect other cases uh, in the next many many cases probably many other cases in the ne in the next weeks. This outbreak isn't a movie, but it's starting to look like a disaster.